Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner. I'm available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. Now if you have been following along at all in the last few weeks, I have been doing a port of Doom, specifically Crispy Doom, to C++. And I have my own fork on my GitHub page that you can check out yourself. Now, when I last left off on posted episodes, I had Doom running fine, building with a C++ compiler, specifically with Clang 10, the last release version of Clang 10, I believe. And uh, we had Doom working. So I'm just going to do a quick um, look here. At this point, I am in my CPP Doom, and I am on this tag here, which is CPP Doom 0, 0.0.0. This is, I have not done anything at all yet. This is the same shared tag as the official Crispy Doom 5.7.2 release. So if I have this Crispy Doom build, I made a build of this, and then I made also a build of the CPP Doom branch, which at the moment just has the code that runs. CPP Doom compiling. That was what I had going here. And that was made on uh, Friday, uh, just a couple of days ago. Um, so I wanted to compare these two versions and I have done that in this CMake build release Clang 10 folder under here. So I've got C++ Doom and Crispy Doom. Now, as far as I know, these two pieces of code are functionally equivalent. I made a couple of small functional changes where I could and I simplified a couple of things. I used vector where I had gotten rid of some um, well here. Let's get rid of those call grind files. Those are irrelevant to this code. That was an attempt to see if I could get some stuff working here. So I've got a couple of things in the SDL sound. I am using a standard vector. Here, and this is for loading samples. So these are sound data, things that were already loaded, and I'm, I'm just, this should only happen at startup time, loading these things in and out. And then the text screen stuff is stuff that uh, should only happen in the, in the config files, in the configuration. So that shouldn't be a thing that would get in the way of any of this. I also managed to use unique pointer, I thought. No. Shared pointer in a couple of places where I've got this text widgets. Again, this is in the text screen stuff, so this should not affect normal gameplay. Now, I did do a couple of placement news um, here. So again, this is just in the text GUI and then in the memory.h. So let's look in this help for function. So I am actually doing a placement new with our create struct. So let's just look at that real quick. So this is to deal with some of the things. Let's look at this um, MIDI file. So in the create struct stuff, uh, this is because oh, I needed to work with NC++'s object lifetime rules. You can't just allocate a blob of memory and treat it as if it's an object of a particular type in C++. That's not allowed. I needed to do 
a uh, allocate the memory and then do a placement new there if I wanted to stick within the way the old code worked and stick with C++'s object um, model and memory model here. So I did just these handful of things and the rest of it is just reams and reams of static cast. There's so many static cast and reinterpret cast and so many things just to satisfy the C++ type system. Now, if you were paying attention a moment ago, what I saw here is that the C++ doom is actually a smaller binary ever so slightly than the crispy doom binary. Now they should have the exact same functionality. And by all accounts, C++ Doom should actually be larger because it hypothetically has things like exception handling code in there because it's possible for new to throw an exception. It's possible for vector operations to throw exceptions. It would also have RTTI, that is runtime type info, because I did not disable either of these features. Now these are features that a lot of people who are in the high performance or game world say that they have to disable because it causes too much overhead. Now all I did is recompile Crispy Doom with C++ for the most part, just a couple of little changes. And we see that I have actually gotten a smaller binary. So then I wanted to see if I could test the word performance between these two things. So what I have here is the ability to run time demo against a particular test, uh, which pre-recorded demo. It will run it as fast as it possibly can, and it will tell us some timing info. So I'm going to do that. Now you'll see that it just goes straight into the demo and it just runs through this. Now I just tried to make it interesting enough that uh, there was some things going on and there was some real code perhaps being executed. So I get through the first level, I get into the second level, and then I, I die pretty successfully in a few moments here. Now I am running this, I believe that was CBP, C++ Doom that I launched it with originally. Go pick up a key card and get down into this pool in just a moment. I'm, you know, I'm not like an outstanding Doom player or anything like that. But like I said, I just wanted to make it interesting enough. Yeah, there's that demon there. Okay, so it ran at 124 frames per second, 1829 real ticks to play through that demo. Now I am going to run this in Crispy Doom. Same exact demo. And it should be interesting enough that it is taking, you know, it's, it's going to be doing the exact same things. As far as I can tell, there's no difference between these. They should be uh, frame for frame pretty much exactly the same. It's just playing through the demo as fast as it can. We can still see all of the same actions happening. The uh, picking up of items works, interaction with the other characters, cut screens. Everything's good here. Now keep in mind, this is running on the same system I'm recording on. So the fact that I am recording right now does slow things down a little bit. But I saw consistently the same things happen. There we go. So I was able to manage 124 frames per second versus 123.4, right? It's pretty fine line. But what I've noticed consistently is that the C++ version is slightly faster than the original version. I don't know why. And um, we would have to really dig into the binary and find out. But this has been consistent for me running these tests. Now I have also 
run these tests a few times with the branch um, perf test running to see here. Now what I have seen again consistently is that when I run with the crispy doom, here's crispy doom, that I get slightly more branch misses. This is 1.05% and this is 1.0%. Now we really need to dissect these binaries to see what the difference is. But my theory at the moment is that because the C++ memory model does not allow for two pointers of different types to alias, that the compiler has found a few more optimization op opportunities when building in C++ mode because it says, well, these two pointers are of two different types, therefore they cannot refer to the same memory location, and I can do um, other optimizations, which, if my theory is correct, could partially explain the slightly lower branch misses. Um, I have no idea if this is actually accurate. And like I said, we really need to dig into the binary and see where the differences are coming up, why the C++ binary is smaller. It could be as simple as more code fitting in the cache because it is a smaller binary. Um, but why is it a smaller binary when it should have the RTTI and exception handling portions of the binary in it? But that's where we are. It seems that C++ Doom, the initial port, is slightly, slightly faster than the crispy Doom build and a slightly smaller binary. So that is round one, if you will, of comparing these two things together. I am going to continue to work on the C++ Doom port. If you watched my live stream from just a few days ago, you'll see where I last left off. It wasn't compiling. No, it was compiling. It wasn't running. And there's definitely some things that we need to look into if we're going to keep going down the C++ port route. So uh, be sure to subscribe and follow along with this uh, exciting drama if you are interested in this kind of thing. Thank you for watching this episode of C++ Weekly.